We're making four things today. It's one delicious lineup, and it's all in the name of good versus evil. Today's video is sponsored by the Lord of the Rings, Rise to War. I could do that in a better voice. Rise to war. <laughs> Look, the game is here, and you know what that means. That means it's good versus evil, and we're gonna pick a side, boys. There's three of us. At the same time, I go one, two, three, and on four, you're gonna say what side we should pick, all right? Good or evil? Okay. okay. One, two, three. Evil! evil. Oh. <laughs> Do we want to be evil? I thought I was gonna be the only one. <laughs> we all want to be no, evil. No, we're good. We're we want... supporters of Gandalf the Grey. We're supporters of Gandalf the Grey. We are. And look, if we support evil, our food would suck. And we want to support good. We're on the side of good. We want our food to be good. But listen. Orcs don't eat good food. Max says, orcs don't eat good food. Uh, and in true uh, uh, hobbit spirit, I'm not just barefooted, but I'm short-panted. Short-panted. In honor of this battle between good and evil. And to highlight the four resources of the game, we're using each one of them as a, a, a cooking platform or thing. For example, wood will be used to cook our really highly flavored anchovy based marinade lamb on metal will have a flat iron steak with a really good coffee rub cooked on it grain will come in the form of creamy polenta that will be served with everything and stone will be used to cook our broccoli rob i mean look somebody's got to feed the armies of good and why not let it be us gentlemen Here's the order. Even though we all chose evil. <laughs> we think evil's fun, but we want to be good today because we want our food to be good. We feel like it's got to be the right vibe. Listen, here's the plan. Here's the lineup. We make this little uh, anchovy-based deliciousness for the lamb. We prep the lamb. We put it on. We make this coffee rub for the flat iron. We put it on the flat iron. We start our polenta because it takes a few minutes. And the broccoli rub happens very quickly or right near the end as everything else is finishing. Lamb, here we come. And before you start crying about me using anchovies, biatch, live with it. It's the best. You won't taste anchovies. I always say this. You'll just be like, damn, what has Gandalf done to this lamb? Because it's amazing. Starting with a mortar and pestle. Because I've got some anchovies here, about an ounce of them, that I want to mash up. So those will go in. We'll give them a quick little zhuzh like this. You could absolutely do this in a little processor. You could finely chop them, but we're gonna be fine like this. Those are Hobbiton anchovies, right? Hobbiton anchovies, yes. Straight out of the Shire. Okay, let's put the rest of the stuff in. We'll go with a couple cloves of garlic, and you know me, I'm enjoying this squeeze one these days, so we'll do that. Maybe a quarter of a cup of olive oil for beautiful richness. A splash of soy. What was that, maybe two teaspoons max? Go a little pinch of chili flakes, half a teaspoon. I want some lemon zest in here, so you can do, you know, half a lemon's worth of zest. And then the juice of a lemon. Squeeze through your fingers, no seeds, please. And if you're looking at my hands and thinking they're dirty, it's because hobbits have dirty hands and feet. You can't help it. A couple tablespoons of parsley chopped up. Good pinch of salt and pepper. Let's continue mortar and pestling. The mortar and pestle? We're mortar and pestling. This is gonna be insanely delicious. And oh great, I've got a small cut on my thumb and I just got lemon juice in it. Ask me how it feels. How does it feel? It hurts like shit. Okay. You took a wound from an orc blade? <laughs> Lamb time. Yes, I took a wound from an orc blade. I hate the orcs. Fuck you orcs. Fuck you orcs. There's our lamb. This is a boneless leg of lamb. Look, you can cook it like this, but we're cooking it over wood. I don't want it to take six years. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna have more surface area to get charred, beautiful, crusty edges and stuff, but also more space for that marinade that we just made to go on. So you gotta get it out of the bag. This once had a bone in it and no more. Now it's this, right? So look, could you cook it like this? You could, but it's uneven. It's big pieces here and small pieces here. So, by the way, I just noticed my hands. This is from the charcoal fire that I've got going over there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and level this playing field, right? That made an awful lot of difference right there. This piece is a bunch of fat. I'm gonna lose this guy. And some of the big chunkier bits of fat I don't really want. 
I want some, we like fat, it's flavor and stuff, but a big hunk like that, maybe we don't have to have. So take this out. If we're relatively flat, I might do this, bring this guy down a little bit. And by the way, opening them up like this, like a book, gives you more edges to catch smoke, to catch flame, to catch gorgeous cookingness. And now fat here, good. Too much fat here, no good. This, not necessary. Maybe you go to like a quarter of an inch of general thickness, which it's kind of there, but. And by the way, Chance is not just on the other camera today. He's the fire tender for our lamb cook. I chopped the wood, Max chopped one piece, and Chance is in charge of the fire. He's not just dreamy-eyed Chance, he's dreamy-eyed Chance that knows how to get a fire going. And wait do you see what we're cooking on. It's lots of fun. And we're sending him to Mordor if he fucks up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. This is a little, still a little thick on this end for me, so bring him down a bit. Oops. Nope, didn't cut myself. I think I'm good. Alrighty then. So I'm gonna do this guy in two pieces. So we'll just cut like this and you'll see why when we go to cook it. But now let's get our anchovy business back and get it happening. So let's do this. So some on both sides, of course. And if you can get it on and give it, you know, a half an hour to sit and come together, just go ahead and do that. You'll be way better off. And while our fire gets going, this is the perfect time to get this ready and let it start to sit and suck in some of these flavors. Come back here, we get this side all beautiful, and this guy. So this is gonna be big flavors. The flat iron will be big flavors, and we'll keep the polenta kind of neutral because, well, because we're gonna let the flavor come from this stuff. I'm loving this. Let's move to our next resource, and that would be grain for the polenta. This is five cups of uh, just boiling water, and this is one cup of polenta. And we're going to start to add it. I worry that if you add it all at once, it will clump. And we don't want that. So we add it slowly. You'd be in such shit with Gandalf if you did that? Nobody wants to fuck up Gandalf's polenta. Nobody wants fucked up polenta. Get it all in. About a teaspoon of kosher salt. So we stir for two, three minutes until it starts to thicken. And then it will look like this. Okay, you can see it's thickened slightly. So now we turn it down. I don't want uh, this boiling nonsense. A little simmering away is a good thing. We do not want the fires of Mount Doom. We want a nice, gentle kind of simmer. And once it stops that bubbling, we're gonna come back to it every 10 minutes and give it a stir until it gets super luscious. Okay, but now our steak that we're gonna cook on ore, or in our case, steel. Okay, so coffee rub. Guess what it begins with? Coffee. That was rhetorical. And we're using about a tablespoon of each of the following. That would be coffee. And by the way, this is not time for some vanilla hazelnut BS. Just straight, dark, black, espresso type would be good. Tablespoon of brown sugar, tablespoon of paprika, tablespoon of cumin, sorry for spilling, tablespoon of salt. Oh, and then some black pepper. Oh, maybe a half a tablespoon, but whatever is good. Into this, we will mix. Fantastico. Coffee, gentle little extra flavor in here. Never hurt anybody. Guess you could use decaffeinated grounds if you were so inclined, but I don't think this is gonna keep anybody awake. And don't worry, cause you'll be playing Lord of the Rings Rise to War anyway, so all good. All right, the steak. That elves, hobbits, dwarves, and men is a flat iron, and honestly, one of my fave cuts. It really is. What I really like about it, but the flavor is great, but you can see the lines. There's no question about how to cut this guy when you're all done. So we give it a little bit of oil, front and back, and this is gonna help everything stick. And now we just come in with this little rub we've made and be generous. Remember, we're on the side of good here, so flavor is important to us. Not like those effing orcs that, what the hell do they eat anyways? Hobbits. Okay, we flip, we finish. And when you're good and covered, give your polenta another stir, remember, for 10 minutes or so, get the sides. And plenta is gonna wanna stick maybe to the bottom, so make sure you're all the way down, right? We don't want that. This is looking good. Let's go deal with our first two resources, wood and ore. You just can't cook with wood on anything, so we've got our own version of the Tower of Isengard. It's glorious. Wait to see how this thing works. We had to put it together. I don't really remember what it's called. Okay, so here's our beautiful lamb. And now we're gonna go fat side up. So we'll go like this. And then our other piece here. 
So I wanted to try and keep them both close to the center, and that's why I cut it. And look, now with the flames lapping away at the bottom of it, we can't give it a little bit of color if we want, and that's easily done by releasing the chain like thus and slowly bringing it down. <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever. I want all my meals cooked in the Tower of Isengard. But of course, we don't want it to burn up too quickly, so I'll bring it back up. It's not the hardiest of things I've ever cooked on before, but it's pretty good. The dwarves in our army will be quite happy with this leg of lamb. <laughs> By the way, I love lamb. We don't do enough lamb. Fellas, do we? You love lamb? I love lamb. You know what that's from there? I love lamp? Yeah. No. <laughs> do you, Chancey? No. Oh my god. What is Anchorman. it? Oh! I love lamp, 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 lamp. Let's just peek and see what's happening. Oh yeah. We got a long ways to go. Maybe I will give it a little bit more heat. Are we on theme for today or what? Hey, you're looking like a hobbit, no shoes. Feeling like a hobbit with no shoes. I tried to grow some hair on my feet, but I can't grow hair on my legs. There's no way it's getting on my feet. I love the way people laugh at that. I don't have hair on my legs, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not scared to admit it. You just got you this whack. I'm telling you, people go, oh, are you a swimmer? I go, no, I'm not a swimmer at all. Okay, so uh, let's do the steak, shall we? And with the fires of Mount Doom below, we're ready for our next element. Or, 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 or. Or, I can't say it with the accent. Oh, sounds like somebody kicked me in the nuts. Oh, so look, it's not thick. It ain't gonna take a super long time. And how are we gonna know when it's ready? We're gonna know because we're gonna use an instant read thermometer, which is really your best friend in a case like this. Don't guess, people, please. Time to flip the lamb. Get it onto the fatty side. Oh my God. Do you see this? Go like that, buddy. <gasps> that is magnificent looking. Jeez. Now, you know, the fat is gonna melt and drip a little bit, so you might wanna give yourself a little more space between the tips of the flame and the lamb on this side. But I'm telling you, what this wood is doing to help flavor this is really fantastic. Back to the ore and the steak, and a little flip. Nothing like a beautiful flat iron. Cooking away with my face watching. Our gorgeous coffee rubbed flat iron cooked on ore is ready to come off and rest. That is a beaut, man. That is a beaut. Our glorious lamb cooked on wood is ready to come off. Oh my. This is a sight for sore eyes. An expression I've never understood, but you tell me that's not frickin' gorgeous. Smeagol's after your lamb! <laughs> And our fourth and final resource, we will be cooking this beautiful broccoli rob on stone, or sort of stone in our case. It gets uh, two things. It gets a good drizz of olive oil and some kosher salt and pepper. And don't say that's three things because I count salt and pepper always together as one and then the whole bunch gets flipped. And if it wasn't obvious, our hobbit friends love the leafy greens. All right, and here is our stone. And I'm saying stone, not stoned, like Mary and Pippin in their long bottom leaf. So we take our beautiful broccoli rob, AKA rapini, and we just throw it right on here and let it start to char up. Gorgeous, gorgeous. This is gorgeous. This is gonna take minutes, that's it. This is fantastic. And by the way, Lord of the Rings rise to war. Oh, we have a crack in our stone. Mm. I thought this might happen. Well, let's just deal as we are here. Because if that happened, it's gonna happen again. Oh, I love this. And so rapini uh, is also, it's sort of broccoli-like, but the heads aren't nearly as big. And it gets, um, it, the leaves can be a little bit bitter. So this is all we're doing. All we wanna do is cook this long enough till these stems start to get a little tender. I hear another crack. I went to a, uh, a uh, the flooring store <laughs> and bought this stone. Okay, this is the way I want it. We're gonna pull it off, let's kill the heat before everything starts to crack. Let's get it on here. Fuck, I love it. Okay, and we're gonna give it two quick things. I said a couple things, but so I actually mean three because I meant to give it a little <laughs> garlic powder before I started and I forgot, and that's okay. 
Nobody will know, apart from the fact that I just told everybody. And then a little chili flake, and then some lemon juice. Good Lord. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, glorious. Okay, swing the camera, let's finish the polenta, and we're there. And here we are. Now you know it's ready uh, when you take a, a little spoon of it and it's not gritty. I mean, because it would have been right in the beginning, but now it's all softened and beautiful. So just two things. One is about a quarter cup of butter, like that. The last time we made polenta, I said this. I love it when you see the butter start melting like that. Ah, it makes me real happy, real happy. And about a cup of finely shredded, I did that on the microplane zester, Parmesan cheese. Remember I said, I wanna keep it fairly simple and plain because the flavors from the steak and the lamb are gonna be big and beautiful. We're ready, let's cut the meat, let's board it up. Okay, first up, wow. This guy, look how juicy. Oh, this is gorgeous. Okay, perfect, take this off. Put these slices on here for our plating. We'll make a little bite for everybody. Maxi, coffee rub, flat iron, go ahead, one, two, three. Oh, wow. Wow. Dang. Boy, oh boy. It's the simple things in life, fellas. Next, our lamb. Oh boy, oh boy, Alberto. And we cut. Gorgeous. Little pink center. Pick these guys up and they go over here and we build. Here's our building board and we go like this. Do a bunch of the beautiful broccoli rob up here and then the polenta. Here's what I like to do with polenta. We're serving right on here. And a little bit of this. We'll put some steak here and then some lamb. Oh snap. Did they eat like this in uh, the Shire Max? Any idea? At the end of a battle, at the end of a victorious battle. And of course, just a little green on both of these guys. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's just visit our resources again. The broccoli rob was cooked on stone. The polenta we had as our grain. The steak we cooked on ore. And finally, this gorgeous lamb was cooked on wood. And beautifully, I might add. So we need a bite of everything. Steak first, I'm dying. I'm dying for this, man. A little knife, tender. How about with a little polenta? That's the whole idea, you get it together. Wow. I got grain and ore in one bite and it was fantastic. So good, the coffee. Even if you don't like coffee, you're not gonna notice it in that. You're just gonna notice it's good. Okay, lamb next. Just a little bite here, lamb. Mm. Just stop it now with the ridiculousness and the broccoli rob. I just got the end, just the tip. Oh my God. Mm. The lemon, you get a little bitterness from the leaf and a little chili flake. And it, could you hear the crunching? I don't know if you could hear. Could you hear the crunching yeah. with the, that's how you want it. You want it crisp, tender. Okay, well today's been really good. Lord of the Rings, Rise to War. I think what you do is you download it and you make all this. That, that's the thing, that's the thing. Do that and then send us pictures of you playing and eating at the same time. A Lord of the Rings party. A Lord of the Rings party. And everybody dresses in character. Remember, no. You're Smeagol. Remember, no shoes and short pants. That's, that's my, my participation. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, thank you Lord of the Rings Rise to War for sponsoring today's video. It's freaking delicious.